All right. Well, we're here. We're going to take off some of our honey. This is uh, this is where we're uh, we're going to see some of the fruits of our labors here, or necessarily also uh, the fruits of the bees' labors. A couple different ways to uh, to pull honey. We're going to pull it off of one of these shallow supers. It's the smaller supers about this size here that uh, most folks use for honey production and such. What we're going to do, there's what we're going to use is we're just going to we're just going to take it off frame by frame. We're going to smoke the bees real heavily, and we're going to brush the bees off of each frame. And we're going to set the frame and set each frame in an empty shallow super and just carry it off. There will be a few residual bees around, but it wouldn't it shouldn't be too bad. Some folks like to use what's called a fume board, where it's basically you put a, a bad smelling stuff on there. And, uh, you know, it, it will drive the bees off, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, I prefer not to do that, but, you know, that's, that's your choice. Uh, there's little bee escapes, which basically like a one-way door. Uh, you put it on with your inner cover, and it makes it to where the bees can only go down into the, uh, to the, to the brood nest or the, uh, the other hive bodies, but they can't go back up into the honey. Various different ways to, uh, to get your honey off of the colonies. We're, like I said, we're going we're gonna to try it this way. Come on over, we'll show you. All right. Definitely, if you're the kind of person that doesn't usually use a smoker, this is the type of time that you uh, would be would behoove you to use a smoker. Uh, this is late May here. We're here in South Georgia, so this is a kind of an early honey crop for us. I'm gonna smoke the bees pretty good. Because we are kind of stealing their their work here, so they're not necessarily going to be the most happy with us and such. Smoking is going to drive them down lower into the into the hive, in theory. Okay. And what I'm going to do as well is so I got a little less to work with, a little less to worry about rather, is I'm going to take the whole shallow super off. From the rest of the hive. Oh! And when they get full of 30 or 35 pounds of honey, they do tend to get heavy. So be ready for that when you do it. All right. Let me get set up here real quick. <clears throat> now, the Lord made these bees, all bees, very, very smart in that. They will only cap the honey when the honey has the correct amount of moisture to stay, to keep for a long period of time. So you only want to extract capped honey. This is all capped. The white capping show you it's fairly new. It'll get darker over time as the bees walk on it and such like that. So what we can do is we give them each a little shake to start with. Okay. A little brushy brush, brush brush, brush brush. Come on now. Okay. And again, they're going to come back to this. We're not going to end up without any bees on there until uh, we get it into uh, to the house. <clears throat> you do want to do your actual extraction uh, indoors where at all possible uh, because the bees will follow this smell. Again, a little shake, 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 shake. And uh, you don't want them to... Uh, you know, be able to get at the honey. And you see here, this is this was capped. It was they had originally they had started building some burr comb or some bridge comb between that and another frame. And when I yanked it out, it uh, it broke the frame or excuse me, broke their comb. <clears throat> and we're just doing it one at a time here. Get a little shaky shake. Okay, and you can pause it, and we'll pick up on it here in a little bit. Okay, and we got our extracted uh, super, or rather uh, the super we took off our hives. Uh, we got that, uh, got that back here, and now we're going to get them prepped for extraction. Uh, you are going to see a few residual bees and such, no big deal. That's what you got fly, fly swatters for. Let me zoom in on this. We're off the grid here. Uh, we produce our own power, so we opted not to go with the little electric 
decapping knife, but just a serrated type capping knife. Uh, you can get these from Brushy Mountain, good, uh, good company to deal with. And we're keeping it hot in this, in this uh, Dutch oven skillet, uh, or excuse me, cast iron skillet while we're getting ready to use. So, what we're going to do, the other thing that's handy to have is what's called a, uh, a scraping, uh, I believe it's called a scraper. And this will get some of the ones you'll miss. So, we're going to alternate heating up our, our knife and just kind of coming along here. And this is what's called the cappings. All right, this is the wax cappings from what the uh, what the bees cap this, and we're exposing the honey now. And the serrated edge, I've done this perfectly a hundred times, but as soon as you get on camera, everything starts to mess up. Okay, we're taking now. There is going to be some wax on these cappings as well, so there's a couple different things you can do with them. Some people they do uh, they have a decapping tank that catches the uh, the cappings, as well as, uh, you know, and then lets the honey blow off of. We just eat these here at home. We just chew on them like bubble gum. Keeping my knife back up. And I'm going to cut a little off. We're just kind of moving back and forth in a little bit of a, a sea sauce type action. Okay, and we've we've done most of our cutting and such. We're going to go back with the uh, capper and just get little odds and ends, bust some caps here and there where we uh, where we maybe couldn't have caught them before and that. We're going to get the bulk of it we can off, and if we have an extractor, we're going to load them then into our extractor. And Chad, if you want to start cranking it, we'll go from there. A little faster, Chad. A little faster, Chad. And we'll show you the results here in just a few minutes. Liquid gold. Texas 2.